think about walking through life, never really knowing who you are, yet being able to understand and even describe and see other people. Like you could see what makes them tick. You can see their motivations. You could see their emotions. You can see everyone but yourself. Imagine going into different situations, different social situations, and rather than going in with your personality, you kind of shape shift depending on who you're with. So if you're with people that are really loud and outgoing, you can fit in as if that is your core identity. And then the next day you're with people that are really shy and quiet and you can shape shift and fit in so well that nobody thinks that that's not you. Living without a self-identity is about constantly sacrificing what you want because you're not paying attention to it, right? For what other people want and need. So you basically live life abandoning yourself over and over and over again. And last but not least, definitely not least, this is not an all-inclusive list, but living without a self-identity is like living through life, trying to find what makes everyone happy but you. There's a lot of emotional energy that gets wasted when you are living life without a self-identity because you are trying to be what other people want you to be. You're never congruent with yourself and it's exhausting and it's, it's not satisfying because it just feels empty. No matter how many people you can make happy, if you are doing it at the expense of yourself, it never feels good. One of the first steps towards stopping that and to start getting a self-identity is to first of all, acknowledge, acknowledge that you've been shape-shifting, acknowledge that you've been people-pleasing and living for everyone but yourself. And that's not an easy thing to acknowledge. It's painful. It's painful to see what we've allowed to take place with, with ourselves or because of ourselves, okay? Putting aside what others outside of self have done, when you look at what you've allowed, it's painful. So uh, be prepared for that discomfort. But until you see it, that's the only way you can start changing it. I remember a time in my life where somebody said, somebody asked, uh, I guess I could say a friend of mine. It wasn't really a friend because it wasn't reciprocal, but I say this video, I'll just say it was a friend of mine. They asked her what she likes most about me in the friendship. And her response was, Michelle does everything to make everyone happy. And at the time, maybe I thought that was great. Wow. I make people happy. I work so hard to make people happy, but as I matured and as I looked back at that, I thought, well, it's not my job to make everyone else happy. And how come no one's trying to make me happy? The reason is, is because when we are so busy trying to make other people happy, we are accidentally teaching them, I don't matter, you matter. And so the whole focus is becomes one-sided because it's all about the other person. Now, in my defense, I was super young when, when that was said, but it really was hallmark of a lot of my younger years, was spent trying to make other people happy and not even having a clue as to who I was. So I want to encourage people to start putting that focus on self, okay? And I know that that can sound or feel selfish if you were raised with childhood trauma, raised to think that anything for you is bad. Anything you like or putting focus on you is selfish. But that, that thought is or was something used to control you in childhood. It was used so that you were trained and conditioned to make the other person the complete focus, right? You were trained and conditioned 
to be externally focused and internally blind, blind to who you are, blind to what matters to you, blind to the voice inside your head that is actually you and not the internalized voice of an abuser. Once you can acknowledge that that's what's taking place in your life, the second step is to start connecting with self by either asking or listening to what's going on in your mind. In other words, you start asking yourself, what do I want? What do I need? What's important to me? What do I like? What do I not like? What do I no longer want to tolerate? That's when you start putting yourself, you think of a camera, right? You get that camera. You don't just start snapping pictures. You first focus. So start getting that focus on you and on your self-identity, because if you don't, the danger of living life with no self-identity, you tend to be very attracted to people that display a very strong sense of identity, which could also be a facade. And that could be a very toxic person. And it's almost like you're magnetically drawn to people like that. And it can cause you to recreate trauma relationships that are similar to the ones that you had in childhood. So I'm going to be doing a ton of videos on getting that clarity on your self-identity, on overcoming childhood trauma so that you don't have to keep recreating toxic environments or toxic relationships to heal. There is a better way. There is a better strategy. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of my healing videos. And if the videos aren't enough, and you want more assistance, you might want to check out the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet live on Zoom and we work through the side effects of complex PTSD and childhood trauma together. I'll leave the link here, but please know that the link doesn't always work because sometimes I close enrollment, but it is always going to be open the first five days of every month. So if you want to join this international community, make sure you check out that link.